Hello and welcome to PM Express. Now, today in Parliament, there was a debate about whether some four parliamentary seats should be declared vacant or not. The minority is on one side, the majority is also on one side. Now, the majority's defense or argument is that, I mean, you cannot do that because the MPP party itself has not petitioned the House to declare three of their majority size seats as uh, vacant because they are running. Uh, two of them are running as independent. And one independent candidate or MP who is on the side of the majority has also filed to contest for in the 2024 election uh, on the ticket of the NPP. Now, the NDC's argument is that in 2020, there was a precedent when the, the current second deputy speaker seat was declared vacant because he filed to contest the 2020 election as an independent candidate when he was in parliament as an MPP MP. Now, what has changed? But let, let's break down the issues for you. The whole issue started from Haru Naidrisu serving notice to the speaker that he intends to move a motion for the speaker to declare four seats in, 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 in the House as vacant. Three, as I said earlier, on the majority side, one on the minority side. Now, if that happens, it means that it gives the NDC the majority in the House and the MPP becomes a minority. Now, four current MPs have filed, no, three of them have filed to go independent with one filing or going on the ticket of the NPP when he's actually currently in the House on the ticket or as an independent MP. Now, so these are the three members on the side of the majority. We have Kwajo Asante, we have Cynthia Morrison and Kwajo uh, Amwakwe Siyama, who is the current second deputy speaker. Now, Amwakwe Siyama is currently in the House as an independent MP, but he has filed to contest the 2024 election on the ticket of the MPP, the party that brought him to parliament in 2016. That's why there's this whole call for, you know, uh, his seat plus the two others to be declared as, in, as, as vacant. Now, Kwachi Aka is an NDC uh, MP, so a member of the minority, but he's also filed to contest the 2024 election as an independent candidate. So the call is that these four seats must be declared vacant. Now, what does the Constitution say? If you look at Article 97 G and H, it says, a member of parliament shall, and the key word is shall, vacate his seat in parliament if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. So this is what the constitution says. But the constitution also says that if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. So this is where the second deputy speaker falls. Now in 2020, the second deputy speaker currently, the MP for Formina, who then was an MPP MP, had his seat declared vacant after he contested as an independent, or he filed to contest in that particular election as an independent uh, candidate. Now, he was pronounced, uh, this is what the Speaker of Parliament then, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, this was his ruling then, and I quote, he was pronounced, or he has pronounced himself publicly as an independent and has filed his papers to compete against the party in his official capacity as an independent on December 7, 2020. This was the ruling that the speaker then gave. He continued, quote, having forfeited the membership of the party on whose ticket he was elected to parliament, the operative language of the constitution is that he shall, which is a mandatory vacate his seat in parliament, unquote. So this was the ruling uh, then by Professor Aaron Michael Quay, who was the speaker then. Now, this is all jostling in parliament for majority uh, side. Now, the majority leader says, quote, majority, he goes to, he today alerted the House that he has gone to the Supreme Court over most to declare seats, uh, you know, in, in parliament as vacant. And, and when we've seen the rate, you know, and what he's looking for. We know that currently there are some 138 members on the majority side and 137 on the minority side, which means that if you reduce the majority by three, they get to 135. The, if you reduce the minority by one, they get to 136. So it means that the minority currently becomes majority. The majority currently becomes minority. And that, uh, this is why, you know, there's this whole jostling 
for whether or not seat must be declared vacant. But the minority is anchoring their call for the, for the, declare, the uh, declaration of those seats as vacant on that ruling in 2020. Will it hold or will it not? We find answers here on the show on PM Express. Do stay with us. Let's reveal it together. All right, so welcome back from the break. Now, get ready uh, for the biggest giveaway from Syntex Stand. Syntex is visiting 15 communities, giving them free water. This is to say thank you uh, to G Ghana for making them number one. Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. And you also know that Syntex can come in uh, many colors and, uh, you know, was the first to come out with what we now know as inner white layer. So when it's not Syntex, forget about it. Now, if you are a community and you want to benefit from the Syntex free water giveaway, just log uh, on to their social media handles at Syntex Ghana and nominate your community. The more you nominate, the better chances of they coming to you. Remember, it's Syntex, Syntex tank. No be any tank, be tank. The correct tank be Syntex. Uh, now, uh, MGO uh, of various radios uh, return on to tune in. So tune in and look for Love FM, Joy, Adome, Asempa, and all our media, uh, our radio stations, and enjoy quality broadcasting. Now, let me welcome or introduce to you my guest for today. Uh, Samuel Atacha is MP for Ebuakwa South constituency. Um, we also have Nick Papu Samua Ado. He's law lecturer at the Gimpa School of Law and also Kletos Avoka, who's MP Zebela East constituency, former majority leader of parliament. Uh, grateful to you, gentlemen, for joining here. Now, let, let me start with you, um, Honorable uh, Samuel Atacha. Now, uh, I mean, this whole debate that we are having now, how different is it from the case that was, uh, that pertained in 2020? Well, with the greatest of respect, by my understanding, what happened in 2020 was a situation in which a sitting member of parliament who's come by way of the ticket of the uh, MPP has declared that he's going to go independent. So that is why I believe that uh, uh, Speaker Michael Kuehl declared that by reason of his overt acts and he taking a stand, mm. I mean, that is the end of the matter. It's easy to be a member of parliament. Okay. What are we seeing now? These members of parliament are addressing their future intentions. They've not said, as of now, they want to abandon where they are for any other direction. So, for example, the second deputy speaker is given an indication that I'm an independent candidate, but for the, for the next election, I intend to be on the ticket of the new patriotic party. Would you say reasonably, that that should disqualify him from continuing as a member. I mean, from, from the way I see it, mm. uh, the two are not the same. And if we are not careful, you are saying that let the parliament of today play clairvoyance and determine what they intend doing in the future. What if what, if what they even might have want to do, I mean, um, they want to change their minds. Is the parliament going to declare a seat vacant on like the feelings and the thinkings of the members of parliament. This is a problem that I have. Now, all that we are seeing, they've not crossed carpet yet. They, they are not saying that in this parliament, we're sponsored by MPP, or we came independent, and in this parliament, we want to go um, uh, uh, to another party, mm. or stand independent. Okay. So if they declare their future intentions with the greatest of respect and with my little understanding of the constitution, I do not see why anybody will say about raising of their declaration of their future intent. Uh, the now situation should change and that they should vacate their seat. So this is a kind of um, um, if a like distinction I, I want us to make. Okay. If not, then the, we are reducing the members of parliament uh, to robots, they can't think, they can't change their minds. But while they are addressing the future, they are permitted to do so. But for the moment, uh, has the gentleman who is a second deputy indicated, 
that he's moving from um, um, an independent member of parliament and joined the new patriotic party in this session of parliament. I don't think that is the intimation. But, but, but what, what, what does it mean if one fails to contest as an independent candidate or on the ticket of a political party? Well, what it means is that what is he filing to contest? When? You should, you should look at it critically. So I have declared my intentions for the future. Should it affect my current status? I've not said now I'm a member of parliament and I'm, a, I'm, I'm joining MPP. I'm an independent member of parliament now in this session mm. of parliament, but I've crossed carpet. I'm going to join uh, um, um, uh, MPP. Mm. This is a distinction that we should make clear. And there are other reasons why I believe that there is a political grass matters that should not even engage the attention of the speaker when you come to the other matters. But if you look at um, Article 97 mm -hmm. and marriage with the situation now, as well as what uh, Speaker Michael K. did, it's like you comparing day and night, they, they are not the same with the greatest of respect. I mean, how so? Because in 2020, he was an MPP member of the House, and then he filed to contest as independent. Same with what Cynthia Morrison has done. He's an M she is an MPP member of the House, and she's filed to contest as an independent candidate. How is the, the situation now different from 2020? I, I'm, I'm, I don't really get it. If you can help me, I appreciate yeah. it. Well, my sense of it is that as we're talking now, we do not have concrete evidence that has been done. What have you done? You see, whether these individuals have filed the requisite papers to say that in the future, um, they, they want to, I mean, go uh, on the side of um, MPP or become independent, like Cynthia Morris. Mm. We do mm. not have. This is like a declaration of intention. Mm. Nothing has been filed before the appropriate bodies to give indication that is what they want to do. Mm. But granted, that's what it's going to do. What Speaker um, um, uh, Michael Quaid did in the past, you understand, if it's in error, and I believe it's in clear error of the Constitution, you understand, mm. we are not bound by his decision. Mm. There is no law which says that what the previous Speaker did, if it's in error, I mean, should have relevance for the now moment. And I'm saying that I believe that if you read the, the, the whole thing that uh, uh, Speaker Michael K. Mm -hmm. I mean, delivered, I believe he was wrong. Because what I understand the Constitution to be saying is that today you cross carpet, you see, when the parliament is in session, no one is being dissolved and you join another party post the elections. That's the distinction I want to say. So we have uh, one individual who said, I'm here, the Wayo scenario, and he physically cross carpet. So there's a cross carpeting, which is physical, in the sense that one was in this party and joined the others, which was, which is the essence of Article 97. But I don't mm. believe that if you make a declaration of intent, that you are a sitting member of parliament. Today I'm attached here. I'm the member of parliament for Bokasa. Mm. But in the next elections. I intend joining the NDC. How can you say I should vacate my seat? So, 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 so you are premising your argument on the fact that you disagreed with Speaker Mark, Mike, Michael Quay's ruling in 2020? In material particular, I believe that it was not founded on the essence of the session of parliament. It's a matter which is addressing the future issues. And you're making the MP robotic that he can't tell you my intentions for the future. Mm. You see, so relating to the session of parliament, if you should cross carpet, and I believe Article 97 will have relevance. But when he's just telling you that, look, in the next election, I will not be an independent candidate anymore. I will, I will throw uh, my heart with um, uh, the new patriotic party. Mm -hmm. How can you say that you should forfeit a, a seat? Okay, let me bring in uh, uh, Kletos Avoka. Uh, he is. Uh, uh, the MP for Zebla. Uh, I'm grateful to you for joining. Now, 
Do you, you, you are calling for the, you know, the declaration of the, the seat as vacant, but like the honorable member is explaining, they have only declared an intent. Does it then qualify to say they have crossed carpet and therefore their seat must be declared vacant? So much and uh, good evening to your viewers and listeners. Um, I, with the greater respect, I, I respect my friend Honorable Atachia very much. Uh, he's a personal friend. But I think that his uh, position is one that I can describe as intellectual dishonesty. Mm. Whether for practical and intentional reasons, they have crossed carpet. If you look at the spirit of the Constitution and look at the provisions of Article 97, it's very, very clear that they have crossed carpet. Now, as a member of the defunct uh, Consultative Assembly in 1992, I know that we had conceived a lot about the spirit of this Constitution. We looked at the, the, the brain work of this constitution and we made very many provisions. We had decided that sovereignty of every uh, institution in Ghana resides in the people. So if you look at Article 1 of the constitution, it says that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana. If you look at Article 351, which deals with the direct principle of state policy, mm -hmm. that's the political objectives, it says that Ghana shall be a democratic state and accordingly, sovereignty resides in the people of Ghana. And finally, if you look at Article 1251, dealing with the cause, it says that justice emanates from the people. Against the spirit of this, these provisions, it stands to reason that whether you are in the executive, you are in the judicial or in parliament, whatever you do, you derive your position, your strength, your power from the will and the wish of the people. Now, let's take it that these people who, these four MPs, in, in the year 2020, when we are having the elections, they stood on particular parties. And they, 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 that was an, a, sec, a secret agreement, a pact between them and their constituents, mm. that we are voting you to parliament, you will, you will do the work of the party that we belong to, uh, MPP or NDC, and that you'll be loyal and faithful to the party for the four years that you are going to be there. They have come. And then three months to election, they have gone to file their names with the Electoral Commission, that they no longer belong to the party that brought them to parliament. They have abandoned those parties, they have betrayed those parties, and that they are going to chart a new course, either belong to new parties or going independent. So from the very day that these four people filed their nomination with the Electoral Commission, they ceased to be members of their respective parties. From the very day that my very good friend, the second deputy speaker, filed his nomination to contest on MPP ticket, mm. he told the people of Formina, the constituents who brought him to parliament, that he was no longer their representative and that he had departed from the intention and the reason for which they brought him to parliament. So for, for practical reasons, he had ceased to be a member of the MPP. Similarly, uh, the, the, the member for uh, Gomorrah West and then the, the NDC member have gone independent. Therefore, they have also seen to belong to their respective parties. Mm. I, I agreed in Panama and I said, this is common sense. One, you have betrayed the trust the people have reposed in you. You can no longer be trusted for that matter. These parties have filed or nominated and filed new members of parliament in the, with the electoral commission to contest on their seats. And you are no more doing business with the, with the party. For example, if the party is going to strategize MPP or NDC want to strategize to win the next election on 7th December 2024. Will they still call these people back as independent or other party candidates to strategize with them? They would not. Because they have betrayed them, they have abandoned them, and they are on a different course. That was not the objective for which the people voted for them. That was not the reason for which the people voted for them. So they have truncated the relationship between themselves and the party that brought them or the people that brought them to party. To, to parliament. So I think that for practical reasons, mm. I mean, they, have, they, they, are, they, no, they no longer are members of those respective parties. They've ceased to be members of those parties. And once you don't belong to that party again, then you have virtually crossed carpet and therefore we are off. But, 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 involved in semantics. Mm. But, but, but mustn't it be the political party itself 
communicating that these members are not our members again, then you can base on that to say, once the party says you are not members, of course, then you forfeit your seat. Shouldn't that be the that case? That is superfluous. Okay. That is superfluous. Okay. And then, the constitution is very clear, explicit. Mm. If you look at Article 97, uh, G and H, it does not say that um, the particular party or the group of people in a particular constituency mm. can write to the speaker or to parliament and say that this man or person is no more than of their party. They say that once the fellow has ceased to do business with that party, once the fellow has signed a declaration to the electoral commission that I'm no more going to contest with the, with the party uh, on the ticket of the party that brought me to parliament, mm. they cease to belong to that party. The constitution does not provide a procedure for, for, for people applying to parliament or protesting to parliament or petitioning parliament before they take the action. They say, once you have done the action, you are, you are, you are gone. So I think it is unnecessary. I mean, and then it is superfluous for anybody to think that what happened in 2020, like the NPP constitution mandated them to write to parliament to, to take to do the needful. They, 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 if you don't do that one, then they continue to serve. No, they cannot continue to serve in parliament because mm -hmm. they have breached the agreement between themselves and, the, and their constituents. And as, as I referred to earlier, we are talking about the sovereignty of the people, the sovereign nature of the people. For example, did they go back to the party executives who elected them, the delegate who elected them in the primaries? They've abused that one. Did they go back to the constituency executives and the party faithfuls who fought for them to win the election in 2020? They have not done that. And therefore, they have breached the sacred agreement between them and their respective constituencies, and therefore they cease to belong to those parties. Mm. It's immaterial that the party has not written parliament to protest. The constitution does not provide that. Okay. The constitution is very simple and simple. Okay. Uh, let me bring in uh, Nick Papo Samuadu, who is a law lecturer at the Gimpa Law School. Uh, Nick, the Article 97, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, it, says, one, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Jing, if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. Or H, yeah. if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. But I've had argument from, from one side to say that, well, the political party itself has not communicated that intention to parliament. So why that? But is it your understanding from this uh, provi provisions that the party has a role to play in this? Is it not explicit that once you take the decision, then you are out of parliament? Well, good evening to your listeners and uh, viewers. My point is, my starting point is this, that this whole controversy raises both substantive and procedural matters, right? Okay. So the procedural matters have to do with, as you said, how this provision is invoked. Mm -hmm. Is it invoked by the party writing to the uh, leadership of the House, that is Mr. Speaker, as happened under the Michael Quay um, uh, issue, or is it that any member of parliament can also, as of right, bring to the attention of Mr. Speaker that, look, mm. this is the evidence that we have, that this person and that person are necessarily engaged in an act which shows that they have shifted from the party that they were elected with, or the party platform that they used to enter into parliament and at the material moment have gone independent or have left that original party that elected them into, got them elected into parliament and are, as they say, cross carpets and are now become independent. The wording of the constitution is quite clear. Mm. The yeah. problem, however, is that we are, the, 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 the premise is that we've had a ruling by um, the learned Professor Michael Quay. That provision has been interpreted. Mm. And it was interpreted when there was a certain parliament. So for those who want to talk procedure, then they want to say that, look, until and unless the party that the person on whose platform was elected as MP writes to Mr. Speaker, then it means that that provision cannot be invoked. That is something that the present speaker may have to look at mm. as part of this ruling. That 
Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it also possible that a member of parliament can independently bring such information to the attention of Mr. Speaker? If that is done, then the first hurdle is clear, i.e., the information has been brought to the attention of parliament. Secondly, would Mr. Speaker then say that, look, beyond just informing the House that the person has gone independent or the person has moved from the original party that he was elected from, i.e., the platform that he used to come to parliament, provide me with some documentation, some evidence in support of your uh, allegation, or I'm going to take, you know, as they say, notorious, it is notorious that, look, the person has, to quote Professor Michael Quay, displayed an overt act which shows that yeah. he has broken away from the party that elected him into parliament. Mm. And therefore, by operation of that, he no longer sees, or he cannot be said to be a member of parliament by virtue of the fact that he has moved. And I think that precedence in law, precedence is always an important uh, uh, criteria. The speaker will definitely take into account what his predecessor has interpreted that provision to be. He's not bound by it. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any uh, parliamentary, I'm yet to see any parliamentary uh, rules or any constitutional provision or any law that says that the present speaker is bound by the previous speaker's ruling. But parliament, as we know, is made up of rules, customs, and uh, practices and all that. So definitely, reference will be made to that interpretation. And if reference is made to that interpretation, then it would be surprising if the present speaker would depart from the clear positions as espoused by the former speaker. Okay. Because the issue in that sense was that there was a live parliament. There was a certain parliament. Once the information came to his attention that that member was going to write on the platform into parliament, mm. the then speaker made a ruling. Whether that ruling is correct or not may be subject to legal interpretation. But from my understanding of the position of Professor Michael Quay, if you move by an overt act, overt act being such as, in my opinion, humbly, where you openly declare or you are seen to declare mm. or there's evidence to show that you no longer are going to be on the same platform that you came into parliament with, then clearly you have moved. And you have, as they say, cross carpets. It is therefore, one, whether the procedure that the, was used to bring this information to the attention of Mr. Speaker would be acceptable to Mr. Speaker. That's the first point, procedurally. Mm -hmm. Whether a member of parliament simply announcing to the House that, look, it is my information that has come to my attention that three of my members, three of the members or four of the members of parliament have now filed to go independent. I suspect that being a House of Record, Mr. Speaker may go beyond simply relying on the hearsay or the mere words of the member of parliament and may require some clear evidence okay. on record that that person has indeed declared his independence. It may not be that he will rely on a mm. correspondence from the person's party, but he may rely on, for example, writing to the EC to ascertain whether that person indeed has filed as an independent candidate. If that information comes to the knowledge and with clear documentary evidence, then I think that Mr. Speaker may go in the direction of his predecessor. Okay. Mm. Be that as it may, the, the precedents are clear. If Mr. Speaker interprets the provision, it doesn't take away the right of the Supreme Court to also come and assess that decision and find out whether or come to a conclusion as to whether that decision is in tandem with the constitutional provision. Because remember that the interpretation and enforcement of the constitution is exclusively within the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Mm, interesting. Uh, so, so, but once you've laid that, that foundation, uh, today we also got to hear that majority that saying that he had indeed filed a process at the Supreme Court to, to uh, you know, restrict this process that is happening in Parliament now. But 
How does the filing of injunction against Parliament affect the House taking into cognizance the principle of separation, separation of powers? We've had a very interesting um, build up recently, and I had, was involved in one of those um, cases myself, hmm. where if, the, if it comes to the attention of Mr. Speaker hmm. that there is a pending injunction application, he has interpreted that to mean that he will stay his hand pending the determination of the case. As we speak, I followed the, the discussions in Parliament, and I didn't hear Mr. Speaker say that he has been served with any process so far. Mm. So we need to be sure that officially he has been served with a writ and an injunction with the statement of peace. Mm. If that has been officially done, then going by his own precedence, I'll be surprised if Mr. Speaker would proceed. But it will also depend on the nature of the reliefs that are being sought by the plaintiff. If the relief being sought by the plaintiff do not interfere with his right to interpret or make a ruling with respect to the provision, then I don't think Mr. Speaker will be stopped from going ahead to make his ruling in two days as he has expressed that he will be doing. Okay. Um, I, I think the uh, one of the uh, order, the order three says an order of injunction bearing any attempt by the Speaker of Parliament from enforcing the provisions of Article 97 1G and H of the 1992 Constitution during the pendency of this action. Does it, does it answer that? Well, if that is one of the reliefs, then Mr. Speaker would be, would also have to ask or ask himself whether those reliefs that are busy, because as we speak now, mm. Mr. Speaker has declared a clear intention of giving a ruling by in, in two days to clarify whatever the positions are in respect of this. That does not, and it doesn't look like he would, he is being precluded with respect to having been told that there's a rate. Mm. Maybe within the next two days, he may change his mind. Okay. But if he doesn't change his mind, then we should expect a reasoned ruling by Mr. Speaker on this particular issue. Okay. Once he makes the ruling, that ruling clearly will still be subject to the processes of the court. Because if you remember, in the Justice Act, like this, even where there was a ruling by the then Speaker, that ruling was taken on in court, and the court made its own interpretation of that particular ruling, whether the budget had been passed or not. So that mm -hmm. one is subject to always the court's um, judicial review. But for now, the Speaker has declared a clear intention to make a ruling on the issue. And okay. I don't think that he is going to be stopped as at now, unless maybe in two days something happens, i.e. that he serve and he decides that, look, based on this service and the nature of the release, I intend to hold my hand. From mm. what I saw, it doesn't look like he intends to hold his hand. He intends to make a ruling. Okay. All right. Great for two. Let me bring in uh, uh, Samuel Atacha now. Uh, so, so Ms. Atacha, if you look at the, this, this processes that Majority Leader says is, is begun at the Supreme Court, and if you're looking at it from the point of view of the uh, Republic versus High Court, Esparte, Perco, the, the Perco 2, I mean, does that fight, the process that the Majority Leader says he has filed, does it really injunct the Speaker? from going ahead to, to carry out his duty as a Speaker of Parliament and, 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 and making sure that the House does what it expects of it to do? Well, before I address that issue, mm. there's a very fundamental point which should not be lost on us. Okay. Because if the orders, um, the standing orders of Parliament are not important, then let's forget about them. Why would the Speaker say he wants to do a ruling? Because here is uh, the minority leader coming under a statement that is order 93. Mm. And when you pay regard to order 93 rule 6, where, and I want to quote, where a member makes a statement, the speaker considering the comments on the statement, which we did, may direct a committee to investigate and inquire into the matter, and where necessary, propose legislation. So, so by what um, Honorable Atafal said, did, he's not inviting the speaker to give any I mean, ruling as to whether or not some seats have been vacated or not. So I don't see why anybody should seriously say that a speaker can give a ruling in this matter. I don't believe the speaker has a right to rule. 
Now, let me also stress mm. some notes of consequence. You see, I paid regard to this case, which is being bandied about that in a chief tenancy matter, the mere filing of uh, um, an injunction mm. um, uh, should not restrain a uh, chief from performing his functions. Yeah. Uh, and as a court of appeal decision, and people want to say, oh, this is a, uh, the, the decision of the highest court, the land. I, I, somebody brought this to my attention. But if you care to know, I, could, I can give you a letter of authorities which hallowed Mofat. There's a very important case called Mofat. Yes. And, and in this case, I mean, uh, the court of Rafi purported to have distinguished Mofat. I was looking at the decision by Benin, and I didn't see how he distinguished it. Mofat is the clearest indication that when you have an injunction staring at you in the face, and you go ahead and do the very thing you are being restrained from doing, you are in contempt of the court. Mm -hmm. And there are some authorities that have hallowed Mofat. You see, I, I wish I could, on top of my head, tell you, but I But, 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 but on, on, on the same Mofat case, there are some, some legal brains who also argue that Mofat holding typically applies to civilian respondents, particularly those aware of pending motions, but who proceed to take actions affecting the subject matter of the litigation. Moffat was never intended to apply to public entities such as universities, hospitals, or legislature. That, that's a very J. June argument in logic. When you disrespect a court of competent jurisdiction, it doesn't matter whether the institution showing the contempt of parliament is a state institution or an individual. Mm. How can you say anything that reduces the esteem of the of the court mm. when it's coming from the state is good. But when it's coming from an individual, then it's bad. Uh, that's a very pathetic argument anybody can make. Mm. Contempt is when you show disrespect to the court. And if the president himself is showing disrespect to the court, but for the fact that the constitution actually says that he is not amenable to any proceedings in court, why is the president? He would have hold the president before the court for contempt. Mm. The only thing which is not given to other, I mean, institutions like parliament, is that when parliament is working and it doesn't affect the constitution, the parliament can go ahead and do it. But how can parliament be saying that we are an arm of government, we should undermine the constitution and another man, an arm of government? So what are you talking about the trinity of governance? Mm. That one is disrespecting the other and it's fine. So I, I, I don't want to be funny. Well, I always believe in finding the law. Mm. But I could find for you that Mofat has been hallowed. And it will be very, very terrible, outrageous interpretation of the law that any institution can disrespect parliament. As for individuals, when they disrespect parliament, they should be punished. Mm. It will not be law. It will be a kangaroo law, which is an absurdity of the highest order. Okay. All right. Uh, grateful to you. Uh, we'll take a quick break here. When we return, I'll bring in Cleto Zavaka into this whole discussion. This is still PM Express. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And let me tell you one thing about the mischief that a debate can cause. Mm -hmm. Supposing the majority people now in the parliament at one time tell you that, oh, there is something against uh, uh, this particular person mm. of, on the minority. He has actually operated against his party by something that he said or did somewhere and so on and so forth. Mm. Then you bring it to the vote and then you sack that MP. Because uh, you, the eyes will become, the, 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 uh, overcome the nays. Right. Then you sack them. Right. So it means that majority can use this as a mischievous instrument mm. to continue sacking the minority. Absolutely. Because they will bring the matter to the floor. And then they will tell the speaker, we have to debate. And we have to take a vote. And if they take the vote, they win. Mm. Then they chalk him out. Then they chalk and now hang out. It will become a fine way of reducing the membership of the, of the opposition. So you see, it's not an opposition and majority and minority matter. Mm. It's a matter of a political party. The benefit and news to the political party and not to others. And let me tell you, it's like a man and his wife living in their house. 
and somebody saying that your wife has done something wrong. Therefore, there should be a, a divorce case to sack her. And the man tells you, I have no problem with my wife. Hmm. We are sitting here in peace having tea. What is that man talking about? And you are insisting the outsider that there is trouble. Who should know whether there is trouble or not? <laughs> that is the political party, the, the husband or the wife. Hmm. It, that is the thing. Okay. So in, in, this, in this case, Harun Ayuduso is inviting the Speaker of Parliament to give meaning to the constitutional provision that said as when a member declared allegiance to, to another party, in this case, the member, the members, they decided to contest as independent candidate, just like it happened in the case of Andrew Siama in 2020. He's inviting the speaker to declare the seats vacant. Procedurally, is how you do so right? He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Why do you say so? Because the benefit is not his. The law does not stand to his annulment. The, that's why I talk about husband and a wife. I mean, he, he has no locus. He has no locus. Because he doesn't belong to the MPP. Because he doesn't belong to the party involved. Is, is it you who should say there's a problem in my house? You say there's a problem, I have a problem with my wife. And I'm saying I have no problem with my wife. What are you talking about? So this is an excerpt of an exclusive interview that Elton Brobe has had with the former Speaker of Parliament. It will be played uh, on the Pulse tomorrow, so do make a date for the full uh, interview on the Pulse with Elton Brobe tomorrow. But uh, let me bring in Cleto Zawaka. Cleto, so you, you've uh, listened to Michael Kwe, the Professor Michael Kwe. He says it is not the role of the of our Edris or the, the minority to bring this to the House because it does not inure to the benefit. It is rather the party that should bring this uh, to, to the House. And, and this is Professor Michael Quay, a venerable member of a former member of the House and former Speaker of the House as well. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, mm. I think there are two issues that I want to comment on. The, the first one uh, earlier was the, 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 the read filed by the majority leader in the Supreme Court mm. that my two brothers uh, had commented on. Yeah. And then, of course, the second one is the Michael Quay. Uh, uh, interpretation of what Haruna has done. Um, in, let me allude to the first one first, the, the case in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my contention that uh, uh, the majority leaders rate in the Supreme Court is premature and therefore it's, it's, uh, it's not sustainable. It's very, very premature. Look, the purpose of the Supreme Court is that if an action is taken that you think that the action that has been taken uh, infringes or breaches the Constitution, then you can bring an action to the Supreme Court. Okay. This is a matter that Parliament has not yet debated and taken a decision. It is only like we debated today, the Speaker comes out with a ruling that you are dissatisfied with the ruling because it is contrary to the, the, the law of the, uh, the Constitution. Then you can then bring the action to the Supreme Court. But if there is no decision yet on a matter, and then you rush to go to the Supreme Court, I think that is an abuse of the judicial process and the parliamentary process. But but now, but but, you, but he says he's 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 injuncting the speaker from going ahead to even make a, a decision on this. It is it is illegal to injunct the speaker when no action has been taken. Okay. You can only complain about an action that has been taken that has that you think it has breached the constitution or is in conflict with the constitution. If no action has been taken, the constitution has not been breached. How can you speculate? Why do you speculate and go to court? Mm. Then, if so, Parliament will never do any work in Parliament. Any time that a bill is brought to Parliament, we have not yet gone through the processes, the three first reading, second reading, and third reading of the bill. Then the bill is laid in Parliament, or a bill is about to come to Parliament. Then you go and look for an injunction and say that Parliament should not look at the bill or the LR or the, or the instrument or whatever. I think that is certainly an abuse. And then that is uh, preventing Parliament from doing their work or tying their hands and okay. asking them not to cry. Mm -hmm. I think that is, that is, that is illegal. So, I mean, the Honorable uh, Fenyo Markin's uh, position of going to the Supreme Court, when no decision has been taken on Haruna's uh, petition, is premature, and, and, and it, it cannot stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, okay. as I said, Parliament will never do anywhere. Any time that Parliament is about to do something that's sensitive, and the matter before Parliament, and Parliament has not done anything, then anybody at all can go to, to court, the Supreme Court or the court and then injunct Parliament. I think okay. that certainly is, is unconstitutional. Now, okay. we, I have a great respect for Professor Mike Okwe. Mm. Uh, he was my speaker, he's my colleague at the bar and the rest of them. 
But I think that his current position is uh, that uh, you need to be a beneficiary before uh, uh, Orwa had not ought to be a beneficiary before he brought the matter to Parliament. It's, it's unfortunate. The, it's a constitutional matter. Article 97, G and H are constitutional matters. Mm. The principle is that if anybody, if any Ghanaian feels that somebody has taken an action that infringes upon the constitution, then the fellow can bring an action to the Supreme Court to make, the, to make that, uh, that action, to declare that action null and void. Did I need to be a beneficiary directly? No. With the greater respect to him. And the Constitution in, in Article 97 does not say that if you are a beneficiary or whatever, what, 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 what's anything that will affect you by mm. virtue of the fact that four of them have gone other independent or have joined to another party, you must... You must, uh, you must have a, a direct benefit or a direct uh, dis, disadvantage before you bring the action to, to parliament or to the court. I think that okay. is that is overstretching the. It's, so, it's, so, it's, so, it's, so, 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 so. I mean, in, in thirty seconds, the of his caliber can make that statement. Mm. In thirty, it's a constitutional provision. And okay. You and me know, any anybody who thinks that a constitution of Ghana of the Republic of Ghana has been breached, he's a Ghanaian. Can bring an action. Well, in in, 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 in thirty seconds. In 30 seconds, how do you think your house, uh, the House of Parliament, should address this issue? It's just like what we have done today. Mm. Uh, the matter has been, the speaker's attention has been drawn to it. Mm. The minority leader uh, moved that by virtue of Article 97, uh, uh, one of the constitution, these four people have breached the constitution and uh, mandatorily, they, 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 they have to be suspended or to be dismissed from the house. Mm. And then we have debated. Both sides of the, the political divide have debated, and the speaker has rightly given time to, to, to look into the, the submissions and then other practices mm. and then come up with a ruling. Okay. We are on the right track. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Honorable Tatcha, what's your expectation of, on, on this matter? It's very pathetic that for once, mm. some people who are running away from the pools uh, of no. December 7th and believe that they can use a speaker to achieve a majority in parliament and do what they are trying to do. The power to interpret the constitution is not with the speaker. So when you have the, the legislature trying to subvert the role of the judiciary because of political advantages and interests, it's pathetic. Okay. And it is sad mm. that they are trying to lead the speaker into temptation and set a very terrible precedent. Now, when people are confused about what the constitution actually means, then an extension of parliament. Okay. That's the extension of the Supreme Court is parliament. Mm. That should okay. never be a president. That should be said. Okay. All right. Nipa Posamodo. Yes. In 30 seconds. Oh, I think that this is this this whole exercise is good for our democracy, constitutional democracy. Mm. Let the speaker make his ruling. Um, those who disagree have the opportunity to go to yeah. court in respect of the matter. And then mm. we yeah. take it from them. Okay. I think that right. it, it is all good and it enriches our democracy. We need to have those provisions interpreted so that okay. we can be the better for it. All right. Uh, gentlemen, I'm grateful to you for joining us, uh, Samuel Atachi. Can I say something? Uh, let, me, let, me, let me say something. One, one minute. 30 seconds, sir. Yeah, 30 seconds. The speaker is not going to interpret the constitution. The speaker is going to make a declaration on the provisions of the constitution. Mm. These are two two different matters. Okay. There are provisions of the constitution. The speaker is going to say my understanding of the of the provisions of constitution is that they, they exit parliament or they don't. Mm. The, mm. the issue of interpretation interpretation doesn't come. It's a declaration that he's going to make. Mm. So there's nothing unconstitutional about if the speaker comes out with a ruling. Okay. Grateful to you, uh, Samuel Atacha, uh, Kletos Avaka, and Nick Pako Samuel Ado. This has been uh, PM Express. Thank you for your company tonight. God willing, tomorrow. Good evening.